half in the bag. Ain't nothing funnier than a good old-fashioned poop joke. Well, Jay, we made it all the way to Camp 2. Actually, I think we're at Camp 3. Or maybe the second step. I don't know, I'm not keeping track. <laughs> I don't know. I don't see what the big deal is anyways. I mean, all people had to do was run a couple of thousand extension cords up the mountain and they'd have hot coffee just like us. <laughs> Stupid people. <laughs> yeah, what a bunch of suckers. Can you believe people actually die up here? I'm not even cold yet because I'm from Wisconsin. Yeah, if a couple of VCR repairmen can make it all the way up here, then any stupid, fat, lazy, idiotic, moronic, dumb, moo cow flyover person from the Midwest could do it too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, did you pack a bottle of booze into your supply bag that has limited space? Well, yeah, I just brought a little Bailey's, you know, splash into my coffee. What's the big deal? Just, just, you know, just a little splash into my coffee. What's the problem? Mike, I think you have a problem. Oh? You didn't put enough in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what did you think I was going to say? <sighs> you know, any rich asshole can pay some Sherpa to hold their hand and walk up a mountain. God. You and I, we're going to be the first people to make it to the top of Mount Everest wasted. Fuck yeah. And that's good too, Jay, because I took out all of your insulin to make room for this. I don't, I don't, I don't know why I brought this. There's not much in it. It's wine, why not? It's a, you know, you gotta, you gotta bring a little Pinot. <laughs> you know? Actually, this, this is empty. <laughs> but, but say, wait, who needs the space, huh? <laughs> Yeah, but this one's clearly full. That one's for me. Hey, Mike, have you seen Everest? Well, of course I've seen Everest. I'm on it. No, I'm at the movie. <laughs> Some sake. Oh, yeah, I've seen... Oh, my God. At last, it's what we've all been waiting for. And let me tell you, movies don't get bigger than this. This film is rock solid. Every actor gives a peak performance. This movie's flying high at 30,000 feet. So without further ado, here's our discussion of The Intern, starring Robert De Niro and that annoying actress. Jay, we're talking about Everest. The fuck is that? It's a movie about the world's tallest mountain. That's why all is it, the- Is it a fantasy movie, like The Lord of the Rings? No, 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 it's a real, it's a true life story that, that happened. Oh, now I feel really bad about laughing so hard through the whole thing. It's good. I wish I was with you. We'll all go climbing together next time, the three of us. What about your wife? Oh, she's been fine with it ever since we divorced. <laughs> good morning, people! <laughs> if it isn't the mayor of base camp, yeah. sit down, man. Climatize. Jamaican-born director Balthasar Cormaker brings us the true life story of a bunch of climbers who got stuck up on Mount Everest and some of them died. Mike, what did you think of Everlists? Effortless? Effortless. Uh, I liked this movie a lot. Uh, it was a solid movie. It's exactly what I expect. Oh, can I lean on Mount Everest? I don't know. I mean, you were, so apparently you can. It was a solid film. All I could think about when we were watching it was that all these people, all the problems that they go through could have been avoided if they just didn't climb up the mountain. That's true. Just don't climb it. But yeah, I, 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 I was thinking about that in my brain a little, like, and, and the, the reporter brought it up. He's like, why are, you, why are you doing this? You know, and maybe some people just, uh, they... I mean, people do do it, clearly. This yeah. is based on a true story. Yeah. Oh, no, it's a, it's a thing that happens all the time. A lot of people have made it to the top. It's a whole industry. And I like that element of the movie was that they didn't, like, uh, over dramatize the whole, like, we're going to make it to the top. And, and that's, it was like, that's, that's what I was expecting based on the trailer, like a, you know, triumph over adversity type movie. And it's not that at all. It does not romanticize the idea of climbing Mount Everest. No. And that was what I liked the most about it. Yeah. Was that it was very... Not cold, like you cared about these characters, but very like, this is what happens. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. uh, people fucking die. Yeah, the only dramatic elements really kind of came from the, 
and you have to do this for a movie, like the, the wife, and she's, she's going to have a baby, and all well, that was true, you know, and, okay. and, uh, uh, and that, that gave a nice little emotional core to the movie. And I'm wondering if they hired Kira Knightley solely based on the fact that she could just cry a lot. She did cry a lot. An oh, extreme close-up with yeah. snot dripping down her face, which is great. It was very unglamorous, which I liked. Yeah, her character slept in a bed, woke up a lot, laid on a couch, and cried. Well, I was thinking That's about that, too, because like, uh, this is a, a surprisingly strong cast for a movie like this. This feels like one of those like late summer, early fall throwaway movies. Mm. Um, but there's like big people in it, like Jake Gyllenhaal's in it, and, and Robin Wright shows up in it mm -hmm. as concerned wife. Mm -hmm. And then Keira Knightley shows up as concerned wife. I was like, they're both being wasted. And not like, oh, the movie needs stronger female characters, just those actresses were wasted. Like, actors, actresses of that caliber. Jay, as, as, as actresses tell us these days, there's very few roles in films for women over 30, except for witches. That's true. So, I mean, they're I, lucky. Well, I was waiting for uh, the twist in the movie to be that Robin Wright was a witch. She was just casting so. black magic because she had a, uh, she was angry at her husband about something, so she cast some sort of spell over him to where he would want to climb the mountain and just die. This is the unofficial sequel to Frozen. It is, yeah. So the girl shows up and says, "Let it go," and then they all let go of the rope and they fall. No, no, don't let it go. <laughs> no, I didn't mean that. Copyright pending. You, my friends, are following in the very footsteps of history. Something beyond the power of words to describe. Human beings simply aren't built to function at the cruising altitude of a 747. Our bodies will be literally dying. Yeah, uh, Josh Brolin is in the film, um, and he plays a Texan who apparently hates his life so that he, he wants to climb a mountain to avoid depression, because when he's up on a mountain risking his life, he, he feels gratified. Yes. And then he loses his nose. <laughs> Um, spoilers. And then uh, Jason Clark is stars as uh, the guy who is the leader of the, the, the group that people hire to take them up to the top of the mountain. Well, who wouldn't trust John Connor to take him up a um, I guess we shouldn't trust John Connor after that last Terminator right. movie. But. Yeah, he might betray you and turn into a liquid digital Terminator. Yes, luckily we have Sam Worthington showing up because someone remembered that he exists and mm -hmm. they put him in this movie. Yeah, he was also in a Terminator he was, film. He was, yeah, he was uh, a Terminator character, so we have multiple. And I thought briefly there's the guy with the big long beard. I thought it was... Uh, uh, Christian Bale. Christian Bale. It did look like him. I thought it was him. And then I was like, what a waste of Christian Bale, because he has like two lines. And yeah. Halfway through the movie, I realized it wasn't him. They show him in profile, and I, I thought, oh yeah, that's Christian Bale. And I immediately thought of Batman Begins. Oh, I was thinking of other Terminator. Terminator Salvation. He's oh, in that, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, so I was thinking of Batman Begins when oh, he trains with, the, 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 with, the, with all the, the monks and the monastery and stuff. But Liam Neeson does not show up in this movie. But Josh Brolin, he, he uh, has a little accident, and he's like, I didn't pay you 60 grand to get me to the top for this kind of fucking bullshit. Es gibt keine Garantie auf den Gipfel des Kar. Aber abzukratzen, weil ich Schlange stehen muss wie an der Kasse in einem scheiß Supermarkt. And that was the only little, like, mean spark that happened with his character. For the rest of the time, he was pretty, yeah. pretty normal. And, and it's nice it didn't exaggerate those points. I was like, waiting for that. I was waiting for someone to, to get angry at somebody else and then tussle on the mountain and someone, yeah. whoa, dangling yeah. from the side. They avoided all that. No schmaltz, no generic movie nonsense. Just really straightforward. Like, you want to see what it's like to climb Mount Everest? Here you go. Yeah, yeah, and, and that was that was good. I mean, the guy who, the, the, there was a news reporter guy, I forget his character's name or his real life name. He was writing for Outdoor Magazine, you remember yeah. him in the film? Whatever his name was, I, I forget. We should have done our research before doing a review, but I read a little article and he's like, the film's bullshit. And he wrote like, there's a oh, scene. Oh, the real life guy you're talking the about? The real life guy. Okay. And he said this in real life, because he wrote a book called, I believe it was called Into Thin Air, hmm. um, based on what happened. He, he basically said that the movie's bunk, but he specifically mentioned one scene, and it's a scene where they're all, it's kind of towards the end when they're all in their tents, and there's like uh, Josh Brolin and then Japanese woman are coming down, and, oh, they're, yeah. and they're like, come out and help. The one guy comes in, and he goes, no, I can't, it's, I can't see, it's too cold out there. 
And he said, real life, he's like, no one ever came into my tent. That never happened. Mm. And then the producers are like, well, we had to, we had to, to, you know, shorten that idea that we tried to get people to come out of their tents and help, but yeah. they didn't all want to. And he's like, well, no one asked me. And the scene that you showed was of me. Yeah. He's like, so fuck this movie. Go, go read my book. Oh, and so sure. then, I, and then, it, then I'm like, yeah. I think, I think to- any most people going into a movie that's based on a true story know there's going to be some manipulation of the truth. Yes. So. Yeah. Jay, would you say this film is both sexist and racist because the screenwriter made the Japanese woman die? Absolutely. Let's ignore the fact that that's what actually happened. Well, yeah, I mean, we should we should change it for the movie. We're to talking make about it more dramatic positive. license. I though. understand. I understand. We should we should we, she should have lived, even though she died in real life. She should have to saved honor her. her memory. They I, should have made her like a like a badass Sigourney Weaver and aliens type character that just takes charge. Yeah, I, she should have picked up Josh Brolin and thrown him over her shoulder. Absolutely, and carried him. It'd down. Be like the end of uh, the Lord of the Rings uh-huh. with Sam and Frodo. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, uh, on the top of Everest, Helen, we made it. <laughs> There is a massive storm headed your way. Oh no. Yeah, I, the, the filmmaker was not Jamaican born. That was a joke. He was, he's Icelandic. He's from oh, Iceland, okay. which is appropriate, I guess. Sure. It looks like a fair amount of it was shot in real conditions, right. which was nice. It didn't look, there was a couple parts early on, like there's the first part when they're going across that, uh, that ladder, yeah, and I was like, "This looks fake. Like, the, like the sky looks green screen." Yeah, there's just a couple moments like that, but it, I, I don't know the making of the, the history of it, like yeah. how the movie was made, but it looked like a lot of times they're in. Real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure they didn't go up too high on a mountain, but yeah, really nice. I mean, it really had that that authentic cold. If they're outside in the cold, then that's good enough for me. They don't have to really climb a mountain. I just hate when they're like clearly in a studio. And there's someone out of frame throwing snowflakes at him yeah. with, a, with a wind machine. Now, the emotional stuff worked for me um, in movie terms and real life terms. I mean, these are real people. This really happened to them. There's these human connections. Uh, but do you feel like you mentioned like early on, this is their fault for climbing up a mountain? Do you feel like, like say you got a, like a tragedy, like the Titanic. Yeah. Uh, this kind of reminded me of that. It's like a disaster. I like disaster movies. Sure. Because there's that f- that whole, geez, hour and 10 minutes of buildup. And you know something bad's going to happen. And there's all right. these little things. And it's building towards it. And I like that about disaster movies. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Titanic, people were just crossing the ocean, crossing the Atlantic. Yeah. They uh, were not oh, intentionally putting themselves in harm's way. Yeah, a war movie. You know, people have to go to war. Um, but this, do you feel? did you feel any kind of disconnect there? You're the one who made the cynical comments. So. Uh, well, I was, I was joking, of course. Um, no, I, I, if you want to climb Mount Everest, go for it. But I think you know the risks, and I think the people that were in this movie knew the risks. Clearly, they show very early on, so they're walking past a dead body, and that was pretty low on the mountain. So There are lots of real-life dead bodies frozen on Mount they Everest. They just leave them there. That's Have pretty... they ever done expeditions to try and like clean some of them out? Uh, yeah, I was reading about it, and it said that they have uh, made some effort to get like a couple of them or bury them okay but like uh, you can't get a helicopter up there and a person isn't going to lug down a frozen corpse right like just you leave can barely walk down yourself so yeah they have to leave them up there and it's kind of neat um <laughs> it's it's macabre but interesting what else are you gonna do yeah. it's gonna take all we got we're all getting down together now let's go if anyone can make it, you can. But along the, the lines of the film, I thought it was very well executed. It uh, hit all of its emotional points. Without being schmaltzy. Without being that's, schmaltzy. That's what I liked about it, and it's not like, not that it has to be dour and downbeat, but it is not the, the cliched. Yeah. We we did it. We triumphed without mm-hmm. you know spoiling the whole thing. Um, it's it's much more realistic than that. I would have liked it even more if it didn't have any sort of score. Mm. It was just natural sounds. Like I think that would have been great. Maybe a few too many characters. 
Especially when the, the, the storms are coming in and you're like, who am I looking at? Like everybody's yes. all bundled up. Yes, there was a thing I noticed that started to occur throughout the movie. The taking off the masks, yeah. You noticed it too. Oh yeah. <laughs> you gotta be able to tell who people Who's are. Who's that? Oh, I gotta take my goggles off and have a mask on. You know off. in real life they would not be doing that, I'm sure. You know what I'd really like to see? I want to see Hollywood make a feature film based on my favorite book and documentary of all time, The Endurance, The oh, Adventures yeah. of Ernest Shackleton. Which Which is, you let me borrow, and I still haven't watched it. It's so, it's so good. I need to watch the it. The documentary is narrated by Liam Neeson. Okay. And uh, the book is from like the 1950s or something. I, I I don't know who wrote it. William something. William Peter Blatty. He probably wrote it. Um. But Ernest Shackleton takes a polar expedition, and the ship gets stuck in the ice, and they spent like four years trying to get back. Oh my God. It's the most miserable human story, human adventure story you could possibly imagine. So Mike, would you recommend The Endurance? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, watch the documentary voiced by Liam Neeson and read the book. Uh, I also would recommend Everest. Uh, yeah, I would recommend Everest. It's good Surprising, I, I had no, like I saw the trailer, it was like, eh, mm -hmm. generic disaster movie, but it's, it's really grounded and really uh, lots of good performances. Mm -hmm. Like I said, surprisingly, uh, a surprising amount of really solid actors in this. Yep. Um, yeah, it's worth checking out. Do you remember uh, Alive? Do you remember that movie? Mm -hmm. I saw that movie. He eats a guy's butt. Is, do they only eat one person in that, or do they eat multiple people? I think they eat multiple people. Okay. There's a couple of people. I just remember the first part they eat is the butt. Of course. It's, uh, the it's got the most meat, the right? The fleshiest, most tender muscle. <laughs> well, oh geez, I guess we should get going. Well, we only have another 5,000 feet to go. Or maybe 10,000, I don't know. <sighs> hey, you know, our plan was to make it to the top of Mount Everest completely blackout drunk. You mean no Irish have ever made it up there? No. I mean, if we're going to do that, we should probably hang out here, drink a little more, you know, get our pregame on. Yeah, pregame. Yeah. I have all this booze. Sure. Should we talk about some more movies? Fuck yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, I see movies all the time. I got so much to talk about. I'm going to watch one right now. Okay. Did you get reception on your phone up on Mount Everest? <clears throat> no. Well. It's a good thing alcohol doesn't freeze. <laughs>